High resolution mapping in VT, uh, clearly something we have access now with this system. But before reviewing this, I'd like to more generally investigate um, the role of multipolar um, mapping catheters because I think it's the ground for providing high density mapping. And uh, as the Orion is pretty recent, we did some work with the uh, other existing multipolar catheters to um, try to uh, document the impact uh, of this technology on, on, on the map we were recording. Yeah, and clearly there are some advantages, um, um, extended mapping capabilities, of course, faster mapping, and the fact that, that these catheters have dedicated electrodes that are smaller with shorter inter-electrode distance, and probably makes them less sensitive to far-field signals, and, and we'll see that it turned out to be really the case in the study that we did with Benjamin Bert, one of our fellows in Bordeaux, um, where we did it both in animals and in patients um, some uh, map with the path ray catheter, which is a multipolar catheter made of one millimeter um, electrodes uh, with 262 spacing. And um, we also repeated the, the, the map with a, a uh, ablation catheter uh, to compare the kind of signals we were getting was both uh, type of catheters and also to compare the impact on the uh, map we were recording. And we analyzed what we call pair points where the catheter has recorded, uh, where both catheters have recorded signals at the same place. Now it's never ever exactly the same place, but within less than three millimeters. And in this case, uh, it's um, 0.6 millimeters difference as you can see here. Uh, really um, the same uh, location, so that we get signals that should be the same if there was no impact uh, by the um, difference of the uh, electrodes that are mapping, but it turned out to be very different signals. So this is what we've got with the plant ray catheter with a far field signal that is really um, low frequency um, and um, low amplitude as well, and a near field signal that is delayed in the scar um, again, either in animals or in patients, uh, and, and uh, this one is in, in, is in a patient, I think, and um, the uh, amplitude of the uh, near-field component um, is clearly higher than that of the far-field component. Very clear to distinguish both. And here is what we've got with the ablation catheter with a huge far-field that is 10 times greater than the um, near field that is really small and small enough perhaps to be missed. So this tells you a lot about the interest uh, that um, is um, using the right tools for mapping. And so this is showing you the difference in, in the map uh, here. Um, and clearly the um, border zone is much um, better defined by the uh, path ray map as compared to what we have with the uh, uh, thermocool map. And in addition, the likelihood of identifying uh, some channels of relatively preserved um, ventricular signal amplitude is much higher when you use the uh, multipolar uh, mapping catheter as compared to the ablation catheter. So it's really uh, making things very different. This is another example where you barely see the uh, lava potential, the abnormal potential, and where here it's big, easy to see, and bigger than the far field signal. And when we looked at uh, more than 800 um, point pairs, uh, we could do some statistics where we clearly had uh, big differences, uh, and the agreement rate on lava potentials, those that matter for VT ablation, was in fact very low and surprisingly low between both type of catheters. And the impact on the bipolar voltage was uh, significant, um, 0.9 in the uh, low voltage region by the uh, ablation catheter as compared to 1.5 was the, um, 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 sorry, with, uh, um, so 0.9 millivolts was the um, um, path ray as compared to 1.46. Uh, was the um, uh, ablation catheter, so much more far field impact, uh, and, and same in the scar. So um, the um, ablation catheter is giving you a bigger signal, but that's because of the uh, far field component. 
and the near field component is reduced. And that's the opposite with a uh, dedicated multipolar catheter. And the um, electrode spacing impact can be investigated by comparing what you, what you get with the usual bipoles, so one, two, three, four, um, against um, one, three, and one, four, which are getting, giving you much bigger bipoles, and this is what you end up with by doing so. So you get much more far field impact as compared to what you have here. This has some um, impact as well on cafe map. If you compare cafe maps that are achieved with small electrodes as per the lasso catheter here, it's completely different from what you get with the end mark, which is made of big, bigger electrodes. So the point I'm trying to make is that um, high density mapping is nice, but it really take, takes, it, 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 it gives much better results when done with appropriate catheters and dedicated mapping catheters. And it's the case of the Orion, you've seen that before, the uh, very tiny um, low noise printed circuit electrodes are really doing a wonderful job at depicting signals that are really local with very uh, few uh, impact of the far field signal. I'm going to show you a few cases that uh, we did in Bordeaux. So this is a uh, um, inferior myocardial infarction case with a very low ejection fraction. And um, you may have seen this before, but it's so fantastic that I keep showing it. It's not the only case we did though. You will see some more. Um, nice um, double loop reentry with a wonderfully defined channel. Um, and one of the um, very interesting consequences of having high density mapping is that you solve the issue of annotating complex fractionated signals. No doubt that these sites are showing complex signals. There is fractionation here, there are double potentials or very long duration potentials. But because of the uh, very high density of mapping, the system can annotate each of the components. And then you get this definition of the uh, channel that is kind of unique. And you can um, reprocess the map to um, uh, move your um, um, icon here to the sites that you are interested in to review the potentials that have been recorded. And that's what we did here. So at the entrance, we're here right after the QRS complex, and you can keep moving inside the uh, channel. It's a bit later. Uh, low amplitude, and so on and so forth until you reach the end of the channel and you have covered uh, like two-thirds of the uh, activation um, of, of the cycle lengths at that time. It's more toward the end and at the end. And the signals that you record with, with this catheter are, are, are really um, um, nice and clearly defined and we could terminate this VT by transecting the uh, uh, channel that uh, was um, shown before. That's another case with, again, an inferior myocardial infarction, and um, that's the uh, VT, not surprisingly, um, and um, superior axis. And um, this is what we've got with the uh, high density mapping from uh, the uh, um, Rhythmia system with uh, th this uh, very nicely defined isthmus here. And again, two loops that goes away from the isthmus and re-enter. Um, so this is the kind of signals we recorded um, at different areas uh, in, in the uh, um, map of this patient. And you can see that here we are more in the first third of the cycle length and uh, um, investigate all the, uh, all the map. Um, and this is showing you a uh, video with the uh, re-entry, the two loops that are re-entering in the channel and proceed through the channel and then um, exit. And the, um, the, the, the part of the um, um, cycle length that is showing slow conduction usually corresponds to the uh, pivot of the activation front when it exits and, uh, and when it re-enters the uh, channel. And this, uh, to be honest, is uh, new to me. I suspected that most of the slow conduction would happen in the channel. It turned out not to be the case in the uh, patients we have mapped for so far. Um, this is another um, 
ischemic cardiomyopathy that we did very recently. And um, it's interesting because this woman has some um, bivy pacing, whatever, but we, we did a map in, in sinus rhythm in her, and it's shown here. So we're looking at AP view here and LAO here, and we have this big scar that still have a preserved isthmus here that is nicely defined in sinus rhythm and that turned out to be critical for the uh, VT circuit. So you can also get a lot of information during sinus rhythm mapping. And this is another sinus rhythm map where the um, white dots are the uh, lava potentials and you can see that it, the activation really terminates at the lava sites. And if I run it again, you can also see that there are two big regions of lavas and in between there is a preserved isthmus that is going to be, again, critical for the uh, VT in this patient. Um, we did try to investigate the uh, performance of the system in an animal model of myocardial infarction. So we did some um, injection of alcohol in the um, LAD and some of uh, our ship and had them um, imaged by a uh, uh, 1.5 and 9.4 Tesla MRI at the Research Institute. And before that, they've got the um, um, contact mapping with the Orion catheter and Rhythmia system. And um, we um, aim to um, reconstruct, and this is work under progress, to reconstruct the um, uh, 3D anatomy highly resoluted from the MRI with the SCAR and to um, merge that to the uh, um, data that we have from the um, Rhythmia system to be able to um, determine which threshold makes sense when you are doing some voltage mapping with this kind of catheter. Uh, this is also something that we are doing for the pathway, for example. It's really clear that the usual 0.5, 1.5 millivolt threshold that has been nicely determined by the group of Frank Marchlinski uh, some years ago has been acquired and um, made for uh, ablation catheters and certainly does not apply to this type of catheters. Um, and this is going to show you an example in um, one of these animals. Um, so this is the MRI 1.5 Tesla with the um, myocardial infarction here as shown by delayed enhancement, um, some delight, um, dilatation of the uh, apex in the animal was this anterior myocardial infarction. And um, this is showing you the um, uh, endocardial map and the epicardial map that we did with the uh, Rhythmia catheter. Now, it has not been made for epicardial mapping, but it turned out to work pretty nicely. We just did one human case that went very well and few animals that went very well as well. I cannot comment about the safety of doing so, but it's certainly feasible and provides you with um, high density maps uh, as shown here. Um, now, if you look at the impact of the um, threshold uh, for color coding of the uh, um, signal amplitude, it's, it's really big, and the usual 0.5, 1.5 probably doesn't make sense with this catheter. Uh, this 0 0.2, 0 0.4 seems to be much more appropriated and uh, seems to fit much better with the um, scar that we've got at MRI. Now, if you, I may get back, if you remember, this looks pretty dense scar um, as per MRI, but even though we still have some lava potentials. And please have a look at how the system um, display the information um, very nicely, you know, discriminating between the um, far field signal that is very low frequency and the near field signal that is very sharp. So that's also one advantage of having tiny and closely spaced uh, electrodes. Um, it makes the uh, identification of the different components much easier. So that's another example in another animal where uh, the myocardial infarction is smaller, but clearly the usual threshold does not apply and does not fit with the uh, MRI. So we are um, 
Again, that's a work in progress. We have to do more animals and get more data, but we will be able to, dis to um, uh, provide some um, uh, um, information on the uh, uh, best thresholds uh, using this kind of technology. And that's another um, case uh, um, of, of, of this uh, large anterior myocardial infarction in a ship, where again, we have uh, very low frequency signals and very high, uh, so from the far field, sorry, and very high um, frequency signals and higher amplitude as well. And this is consistent with what we found with the uh, uh, panther catheter. Uh, higher amplitude for the uh, near field signal. Now this again is completely uh, op the opposite as what you get with an ablation catheter. And I certainly encourage you to uh, work with dedicated mapping catheters when trying to uh, understand and uh, identify the substrate for VT. Now the only thing that is not well done on this platform, and that is still very primitive, is image integration. And um, unfortunately, we cannot use the images that we generate with our um, music um, um, platform, where we combine MRI, CT, PET scan, whatever, and, and body surface mapping as well, and combine all these informations on a uh, model that is personalized to the patient because it includes all the features that we know about this patient. Um, so, for example, here you have the delayed enhancements by MRI in an AAVC patient, and here this dashed green is hypodensity by CT scan, um, which matches very nicely low voltage during epicardial mapping, by the way. And on top of it, we put the exit site of the uh, VT as documented by the body surface mapping system uh, the day prior to the ablation. So a lot of information you have, and it would be fantastic to combine that to the informations we have with the uh, Rhythmia system, but at present time it's not possible. And Boston Scientific estimates that it will take a year to be able to uh, display this kind of information on their platform. Um, and again, we did that because um, what we have available at present time on vendor's solution is, is not really good as compared to what we can do with existing imaging. It's just about combining them, processing them nicely, and displaying them on the localization system. So this is feasible on Carto and Navix, but not on Rhythmia at the present time, unfortunately. Um, this is showing you the um, um, delayed enhancement in this patient, and it matches pretty nicely the um, blue dots where lava potentials were recorded. It tells you that you have coronary branches on the way, uh, so be careful here, and that the phrenic is also on the way. Does that matter? Well, yes, we do believe that it matters because um, even if you can conduct lava elimination and, and get much better outcome when it's done as compared to when you fail to eliminate, still the um, integration of uh, these um, highly resoluted images has an impact on the outcome if you believe in retrospective analysis because this is not randomized data. Uh, but uh, in our experience, it had some impact on uh, the uh, outcome of these patients uh, with a much better outcome when we were using image integration as compared to patients in whom we just did conventional and um, in a uh, group B of patients where we did um, use some localization system, uh, but without image integration. So I do believe that it's important and worth the effort. I'd like to conclude that dedicated mapping catheters equipped with small and closely coupled electrodes are providing um, higher mapping density and quality. And it's not just about density, but really the signal that you pick up are completely different because it allows for near field, uh, near field mapping, which, which is what matters at the end of the day. Um, and um, high density mapping is, um, in our experience, um, associated with fewer VT recurrences as um, we had some data showing that the use of multipolar catheter was having an impact in the outcome of the patients with uh, significantly less recurrences in a multivariate analysis. I thank you very much for your attention.